how to perform direct percutaneous gastrostomy with DFAS and our gastropexy using endoscopic guidance. These are the keywords used in our article. These are the equipments used in this procedure. We used an endoscope, gastrostomy tube, and an introducer kit for the PEG tube, which includes both a serial percutaneous dilator and an anchor set of T-fasteners. Our case is an 83-year-old male who presented in 2020 with metastatic lung adenocarcinoma and dysphagia. He was given chemo radiation and a PEG tube was inserted at that time. During follow-up, he showed improvement, so the pectio was removed one year later. Two months ago, he presented with recurrent and progressive dysphagia, for which he undergone two esophageal dilation procedures with no improvement. His chest CT showed a mass in his distal esophagus, and the PEG tube was requested again after discussion of management options. Here we can see the CT showing the distal esophageal mass that is causing severe dysphagia. And that's how the endoscopic view of the mass looks from inside the esophagus. As we can see, the mass is causing compression and ulceration to the esophageal wall. We have the introducer kit that is used for insertion of the feeding tube. A 20 French introducer kit is compatible with a 16 French tube. These are the contents inside the introducer kit. From number 1 to 8, we have the serial dilator, a guide wire introducing needle, a guide wire, four T fasteners, a scalpel, two syringes, a forceps, and a stoma measuring device. And this is the gastrostomy feeding tube. As we mentioned, it's a 16 French tube compatible with a 20 French introducer kit. And now let's move to illustration of the procedure itself. With the endoscope already inserted and patient anesthetized, we start by marking the costal margin so that we insert the tube at least two centimeters away from the costal margin. We then transilluminate the abdominal wall using the endoscopic transillumination light to mark the site for tube insertion. Disinfecting the area is done using alcohol and chlorhexidine based sterile stick. We then inject lidocaine subcutaneously at the tube insertion site to make it less painful. As we can see the needle is seen inside the stomach and the whole track is being injected with lidocaine. And now we'll show how the T fasteners work. For illustration we're approximating the sheets tightly together. However in real life we should not approximate it so tight so that it does not cause pain and tissue necrosis. And this is how T fasteners approximate the stomach wall to the anterior abdominal wall. And now back to the patient where we will be using three T fasteners in the same way illustrated previously to approximate and keep the stomach wall fixed to the abdominal wall during the procedure. Here you can see the first T fastener entering the stomach. As seen in the illustration here, we deploy the first T fastener to pull the stomach wall closer to the anterior abdominal wall. And that's how the first T fastener is deployed and fastened into the patient. As we can see, the three T fasteners are inserted in a triangle pattern encircling the tube insertion site. Now we make a one centimeter skin incision at the tube insertion site and we insert the guide wire introducing needle in that incision. As we confirm seeing the guide wire inside the stomach with the endoscope, we remove the needle and keep the guide wire connecting the stomach with the outer surface. Now before we see insertion of the serial dilator into the patient, we will see how the serial dilator looks like and how it works. It basically consists of five dilators with a progressively increasing diameter and the third one is colored red. After we insert the fifth and last dilator, that's how we remove the smaller dilators from inside. And then as we can see, we insert the tube into the widest dilator into the patient's stomach 
and then we peel away the dilator so that we can remove it from the patient. Now back to the patient where we can see exactly what we mentioned in the previous illustration. We start by inserting the thinnest dilator and then moving to the next and then the next until we complete inserting all the five dilators as we will see. The third and the middle dilator measures 14 French in diameter and is always red in color. Now that we passed all the dilators, we will remove the inner dilators and keep the outer one to pass the G-tube through. Now we can pass the G-tube inside the largest dilator until we see it inside the stomach. We can peel off the dilator little bit by little bit until we completely see the tube inside the stomach with the endoscope and then we can inject the tube balloon with 5 milliliters of sterile water and then completely peel off the dilator out. Now we can see the inflated balloon inside the stomach. Then we can clean the area and approximate the external retention ring to the skin. The T fasteners are actually absorbable and they will fall off on their own if left in place. So in conclusion we have to mention that the push technique is so useful when there is malignant esophageal obstruction to decrease the risk of depositing tumor cells into the gastrostomy tract.